students changed the world. Um, 50 year olds, not so much. <laughs>I was passionate because uh, I believe strongly that students had something to say. Students had a contribution to make um, and that student control of student affairs was a fundamental under, uh, understanding that society needed to have. When you look back at the 60s, pre and me, the most fundamental and profound changes to society over the last 50 odd years were begun by students globally. I think we've been through a period of maybe 20 or 30 odd years where students were conned by the powers that be, that uh, the powers knew more what was it the good for students and what students did that happened to. But the current crop, um, I have a, I think the baby uh, boomers that I was from can be pretty proud of the new fires that are starting to occur out, out there. There was a lot of things that we did for day-to-day uh, -day services, but I think if you had to say one thing that I was most proud of is the Guild got out there and got involved with students. It wasn't a case we were trying to get students to be involved in the Guild. We had to tell it what the Guild did for students and why student unionism and students um, having uh, a direct say in their education was so important. I mean, your frustration though culminated in 1979 to shutting down the Guild services. You were protesting, I believe, the state government at the time was bringing in further kind of controls over the Guild. So in showing students what they would lose, what on a day-to-day -day basis the services they just took for on a, as a as a, as a basic right, or it was always going to be there, we decided to shut it. And to show the students that what life on campus would be without bands, without um, food in the tab, without being able to get something from a pharmacy or a second-hand bookshop, or even getting advice, students, uh, whatever. I think it shocked people uh, that we were obviously prepared to uh, actually do, uh, do that but it woke students up. We marched uh, on Parliament. Um, we, we protested on the campus. Um, yeah, uh, I think it, it, was, it was pleasing that we could have incurred the wrath, but we in, instead we incurred the support. It was an era of acceptance of diversity and a need to be in reclusive, be it from uh, in uh, indigenous affairs, uh, women's uh, affairs, uh, gay affairs. And it's now 2019. What do you see as being the biggest challenge for students? Isolation. Students need to uh, communicate to each other. The the, the biggest um, threat um, is acceptance that. Um, things can't alter, that there's a, that the, the past has stuffed the future up. Um, you can't um, get rid of us baby boomers and the older generations and turn things over. Um, uh, we, we, there's, uh, there is not that fire. Somehow students have been conned into believing that they're there to study. What they're there to is learn about life. And that's the, the biggest threat, I think, to students not embracing life, but embracing a course. And what's your, what's your best advice on reigniting that fire? Express yourself. Get involved. Demand. Organise. Uh, an individual changes the planet. And we've seen that repeatedly. Someone has to make the first step. We're in the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong, Man on the Moon, uh, and all of that, and his statement of uh, one small step for up man, one giant leap for mankind. He understood that everything begins with a step. What is wrong with students being given the, the, the power to have control over the things that are fundamental to their day-to-day. -day. The Guild needs to stir 
the pot. Back in the day, the university understood the importance of the guild, the importance of students in, and in formulating what is needed to be provided in the way of courses. You know, why are university hex going up? Students don't seem to want to get out there and protest. You, you, you make your bed, and the question is what sort of bed do students want to lie in and personally overturn the bed and buy a new one? <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Ken. No worries, thank you.